Thank you so much. All right. So let me share my screen here. Thanks for, thanks for the venue. Thanks uh, Jenkins community for inviting me. Um, yeah, it's just some additional information on what Oleg just said, right? If anybody wants to reach out to me, uh, Twitter is one option. If you're not on Twitter, you might be on LinkedIn. Uh, so here's my, my LinkedIn link. You can see Grabner Andy with an I in the end. That's always very important for me. There's a lot of Andes with a Y. I always say I'm the one with the I. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. In case you want to reach me via email, uh, you can just use my full first name dot my last name at dynatrace.com. Because as you can see, uh, I currently and have been working for Dynatrace for 12 years and hopefully for many more years to come. So you can definitely reach me on andreas.grabner at dynatrace.com as well in case you don't like Twitter or LinkedIn. Now today's topic is about uh, a project that we've been working on for more than a year now. The project is called Captain. And in case you wonder what Captain stands for, uh, Captain is the German phonetic for a captain. Right, uh, so we or I and, and the, more, the large part of the captain team, we are from Austria. So our native language is German, even though I think if you ask German people, they probably say the Austrian is not really German. It's a strange weird dialect that we have and we have many of them, even though we're a very small country. But anyway, so what captain does, captain provides a lot of different things, uh, a lot of automation use cases on things that we have seen in our own organization, also with people we work with uh, as part, on, um, you know, part of the continuous delivery life cycle. Uh, there's different things. So if you are interested in learning more about Captain, obviously go to the Captain website, go to the GitHub repo, check out the tutorials, follow us on Twitter. You can, you can find all the information. Today, I want to focus on a particular capability of Captain, which is automating quality gates based on the concept that uh, Google has kind of spearheaded, at least from a terminology perspective, uh, around SLIs and SLOs, service level indicators and service level objectives. Now, before I go into the the, the, the presentation and also live demos and discussions. The, the questions that you have in the polling, um, these are questions that, uh, that you know, I, Oleg asked me, you know, what kind of questions can we ask in the polls? And for me, it's really interesting to understand, have you been uh, familiar with the term SLIs and SLOs? Are you using this already in your company or is it completely new? Uh, what I'm showing you today really works well if you integrate this in your pipeline where you have automated tests. So the question for me is also, um, you know, how does, um, do you have actually tests as part of your pipeline? Uh, the other thing is also, do you do uh, build validation already in a pipeline? Uh, if so, are you happy with it or is there, is there a chance of doing more? Uh, because that's why, why, why Captain can obviously, you know, fill uh, hopefully a gap that you have. And the last question is also very crucial for us. Uh, you know, we are here today with Jenkins on Kubernetes. So Captain runs on Kubernetes, whether it's, you know, any type of uh, uh, past Kubernetes that the cloud vendors put out, your, your own Kubernetes or OpenShift. But the, the question that I also have to you as a community, if you are in charge of your Jenkins pipelines, do you actually have access to Kubernetes? Could you be able, are you able to install a, a tool like Captain on a Kubernetes cluster, or is this something you cannot do for whatever reason? We want to get a little feeling on which deployment models we need to support in the future. All right, um, so let me get started. There's a, a lot of things I want to do, both from an educational perspective, but also live demos. I have two major use cases prepared, but they're all centered around the SLO-based quality gates. So the first one is really, why do we do all this? Uh, it's around automating build approvals. And I want to first kind of come up with a problem statement. So what is the thing that we are seeing in our organization, but also with some of the people we work with, you know, you may have your Jenkins pipelines and you do your build, you deploy, you run your tests, but then very often there's a, there's a manual approval stage where then somebody needs to look at results. And in case you have some unit tests or maybe functional tests, you already at least have some data where you can say, you know, is this a good build or not a good build? Um, but then if there is a problem, is this a deal breaker? Yes or no, right? This is a hard code at quality gate, yes or no. So that's already good if you at least have some, some functional tests. Now, if you are like me, I've been working in performance engineering for the tw past 20 years. So performance is very dear to my heart, performance, scalability, reliability. And the next question is, well, can we, can we add more performance metrics to the mix so we actually get a better understanding? Is this a good build or a bad build? Will this build break the next environment? And I know there's a lot of great tools and integrations 
with Jenkins already available, the performance plugins that can pull in data from different testing tools. But still the problem at, the, that at least I see from the, from the integrations that I know, there's a lot of manual comparisons. You can look at charts, you can look at graphs, but then is this really better or worse, right? If you look at, the, at these two charts, now do I know is the current build better than the, the other one? You know, it takes time to figure it out. So it's already great though, if you have functional tests and maybe some load tests. The next thing from a maturity perspective that we see is people that are adding monitoring data to the mix. So in case you're deploying a build, if you run your test and then you also have, you know, either Prometheus as a monitoring uh, op uh, option for you or an APM tool like Dynatrace, New Relic, Datadog, uh, AppDynamics, there's a lot of tools out there. I obviously put Dynatrace on it because that's the company I work for, but still, you know, any type of monitoring tool will do. The, the, the great thing about this is, yes, we get even more data, but often the people that we talk to, they say, well, now we have even more data and we don't even know what the data means and what the data to look at. And also some of these tools, they don't tell you that from which particular test and from which particular build does this data actually come from. So yes, it's great to have more data, but itself, it still prolongs the process of, of, of approving the build. So this is a challenge that we want to solve, right? So, what was the inspiration on how we want to solve this problem? The first inspiration came, as I said earlier, from Google's SRE practices. So in case you have not heard about SRE, it's a site reliability engineering. There's, there's a lot of great material out there. But essentially, it is targeted on, on three pillars. The one concept is service level indicators or SLIs. And really what this is, it's just defining a particular metric that you want to extract and base an evaluation on. So for instance, it could be the error rate of a, let's say a login test. So if you, have, if you deploy and run a, a test and you check your login, your logout, your add to cart, then you can as an SLI define, I wanna know the error rate when I run my test, how many errors do I have? That's an ESLI. The next thing on top of that is the SLO or the service level objective. So here it's kind of like a binding contract where you say my objective for a particular metric is a, a certain target, right? Let's say login error rate of a new build, if we execute this set of tests, has to be less than 2%. Uh, another metric could be the, uh, the response time should be faster than 100 milliseconds for a certain API. So these are my SLOs. The last thing then is SLAs, and they are, might be more familiar, uh, more than they're more known over the years that, uh, because they've been you know, used you know, for many, many years, obviously in operations to define kind of like a business contract uh, of you as an organization that puts out software to the consumer, maybe your end user or whoever is using your, your software in whatever capacity. Um, and, and there with the SLAs, you typically say, hey, uh, logins of your system must be reliable and fast. Uh, so for instance, you're looking at error rate and response time and throughput, and within a certain time window, you may even have legal contracts where you say, we have to be up and running and available 99% out of a 30 day window. Um, so these are kind of, you know, concepts that Google has brought out and really uh, what I can encourage you to do if you want to read up on it, there's a great Google Cloud YouTube video that's called SLIs, SLOs, SLAs, and there's, here's the YouTube link, but you can easily find it. But basically what they say, and, and I kind of, you know, extracted this information from them is SLIs drive SLOs, which inform SLAs. Now the question is, this is typically done in a production environment. So all these, con these concepts have typically been used in production, which is great. But if we are pushing stuff into production and then we are, we are validating uh, metrics and objectives, why are we not using the same concepts early on in development in CI CD to enforce these SLOs already because we already know what is, what is expected later on. And this is kind of also what inspired us to build what I'm going to show you. Another thing and another implementation that I've seen actually comes from, from our organization. So I, as I said, I work for Dynatrace and Thomas Steinmauer, he's uh, one of our chief performance architects. What he's been doing for years is uh, every time he gets a new build, a daily build, he deploys it with Jenkins into an environment. He monitors it. Obviously, we monitor you know, our tool with our own tool. So we get some monitoring data. And every day, he runs continuous load, and then he validates how does this build compare to the other. And I thought he, well, he had a very interesting concept. He called it the performance signature. It's kind of how does the performance, how does the quality look like? And essentially, he then told me, he, he let me look behind the scenes, and he said, you know, Andy, what I'm doing, after every build, after we get a new deployment and we run our continuous tests 
on it, then I am looking at multiple metrics. These are kind of the SLIs, memory, error rate, and so on, for the time frame of the test. Then I'm comparing them and validating them against thresholds. Either we have hard-coded as uh, thresholds where we know we cannot uh, cross that limit or we just compare with previous builds for regression detection. And then what we do, we look at all of these metrics and we basically calculate an overall quality status of that particular build that comes in. And that's what he calls the performance signature. And so we thought this is actually cool. We have been doing this internally already, integrated into Jenkins. It was custom built, it was home built. And uh, while it worked great for us, we said, how can we take this and put it into now the open source project captain so that everyone out there can leverage it. So that's why what we built Remember, Captain is a larger project, but one of the capabilities is the quality gate capability. So the way this works, Captain Quality Gate can talk to different data sources, whether it's your monitoring tools, your testing tools, or any other tool. It's extendable through an event-based mechanism, so you can write your own extensions. The most important thing, though, is you define your SLIs, so your service level indicators. So what are the metrics that are important for you when you push a build through your pipeline. Typically, this is stuff that your performance engineers would define or your, your, your team leads, your architects would define. They say, these are metrics that are important. And here is a name and here is the query that the, indi the individual tool that can, that can deliver that metric understands. So this is then specific for what we call the SLI provider. So this could be a Dynatrace query, could be a Prometheus query, it could be any type of query against the system. And then, you also define your SLOs. So this is another file where you say, okay, I know I have all these metrics available, but now I want Captain to not only retrieve the values, but for some of them also enforce a, a, um, a rule. So you can specify pass and warning criteria. And here we allow you to mix between static thresholds and also dynamic thresholds where you can compare between uh, different builds. And then overall, Captain will calculate an overall score. So every metric will be scored and overall we calculate a value between zero and 100. And in that SLO file, you can also then specify the total passing score. Now the way this works, if you have Captain in place, you basically say, hey Captain, uh, I wanna start my evaluation because you just ran your Jenkins pipeline, you deployed, you ran your tests, and then you can say, Captain, for the last 30 minutes, for this particular application, here are my SLIs and here's my SLOs. Now you go off and pull the data from these tools, one of many tools, pull in the data, right? These are the SLI values that may come in. Then Captain will compare it against your SLOs. What are your objectives? And then every individual metric gets a score between, between one, point, so one point, if it's everything is good, half a point, if it is in warning range or zero points if it's failing. And then Captain calculates, okay, how many points did we achieve? Let's say if you get seven out of eight total points, that makes it 87.5%, which is good in my case because I, pay, I specified that this is a, a good build. Or uh, if it's four out of eight, you know, it might just be failed. So this is kind of how this works. Very extendable with any type of tool. Now to give you a, a little better example also over builds, right? If you have an SLI document where you say, these are my metrics, response time 95th percentile, failure rate, uh, response time of my login test, number of database calls that my login test is executing. So you specify the SLIs, then you specify your SLOs. So what are your objectives? What have you set out to achieve for the engineering team? And again, this is a combination of uh, dynamic values with where you can compare with previous builds, previous baselines, or static values. So if you have hard-coded thresholds and you define the overall go uh, score, or the overall goal. Now, if build number one comes along and you say, Captain, do the evaluation for my project, for this service. You will see later on, Captain is organized in projects and services and stages, but he said, this is the time. Then Captain goes off for you, pulls in the data, compares it. In this case, everything is green, you get 100%. Build number two comes along in my example. Two, two uh, metrics are not good, so you're getting penalized overall 75%. Uh, that's a warning. Build number three comes along. The first two problems have been fixed, but now the number of database calls that, that, trend, that one of the services that you're testing has been uh, going from three to six, but you didn't allow that increase. So now you're getting penalized, which means now you're down at 62.5%, right? Which is a bad build. So you can stop the pipeline and then build four comes along. Everything is green again. So this is the idea. What this really does, it automates 
a lot of the stuff where you would normally go off to different tools and pull in all the metrics and then compare them. Now, this is the way we explain it in a, in a PowerPoint with a table, and this is how it looks in the Captain's Bridge. So Captain itself not only has an API where you can you know, trigger the evaluation and get a result back uh, as JSON, but we also have a UI that visualizes, hey, uh, this is every single SLI, and like every row here is an SLI, every column is an evaluation run, and then on the top you see the overall score. So it's easy to see how individual builds have done from a quality perspective and kind of taking this number and aggregating it to you know pass warning or fail and then we also have a chart view so uh, you know as a performance engineer that i am by, by heart i also like to look at the at numbers and trends so you can also then look at okay when did this particular metric try to start creeping and like getting getting worse before it tripped over so this is also great all right so how does this now fit into, into Jenkins? Um, remember earlier I talked about the manual approvals, at least what we've seen, you know, it just takes time and it's manual. So what we can now do with Jenkins and Captain, and we have a Jenkins library that if you have Captain installed, then you have a Jenkins library that can make all these REST calls to Captain because Captain has a REST interface where you can trigger it and get the results. Um, the first thing though, and this is kind of a little bit outside of Captain, but it's important, it's a best practice. Um, remember one of the things I said, if, you're, if you have it, an environment where you deploy and then you run different tests, I think one thing we also need to solve is whatever tool you have in the backend that is collecting logs or metrics, you need to add context where you need to give context to these tools. Like when do you actually execute which particular test? We call this tagging. And depending on what monitoring tool or logging analytics tool you use, I'm sure there's ways how your testing tools can tell these tools, hey, this was the time and this was the moment in time when I executed this particular test. Because then you can also get more specific metrics back from the monitoring tool. So tagging is important. But then from Jenkins now, I just say, Captain, here is my SLI, here is my SLO, captain goes off, pulls in all the metrics from the, the, the let's say the monitoring tool or your log analytics tool. Right? So instead you could still look at the dashboards, but it's automating that. It is then validating them. It is then giving you the option to obviously look at the heat map, but more importantly, you also can automatically pull in the result, which means you can fully automate your pipeline. So if a successful score comes back, you can let the Jenkins build pass, or if a, if a bad result comes back, you can let it fail. And this is now completely automated, right? So instead of spending 30 to 60 minutes on looking at different reports, it's just, it's just uh, you know, fully automated, right? So that's the, the point, a lot of time savings. Um, all right, so how does this work? Let me just quickly go through this. Setting up Captain, there's a lot of tutorials. Now I'm going to do it today. I'll show you how, how I do it with Dynatrace, but we also have tutorials out there for Prometheus and other tools. But in a nutshell, Captain itself uh, runs on some flavor of Kubernetes. Um, so that means you need some type of Kubernetes. Uh, we also have a cool installation option for Ubuntu Linux where we have installed micro Kubernetes. So you really just need a Linux machine. Um, and in my case, I need a Dynatrace tenant because I'm, I'm, I'm fetching data from a monitoring tool. But then really what it is, uh, you install, you download the Captain CLI. Then you say Captain install. There's two installation options where you can get the full feature set of Captain or just a feature set for quality gates. But essentially what Captain installs for you in your Kubernetes cluster is different components that Captain uh, comes with. Uh, the ones that we are interested in is the evaluation component. Also what you might be interested in optional is notification. So Captain is an event driven system and you can notify different tools like, like Slack and stuff like that. Also central GitOps, Captain comes with a Git repo pre-installed because every time you are giving captain a new sli or slo it will also version control it now itself captain exposes an api endpoint and also a bridge that's the ui so that's what you basically do is a captain install then you configure your monitoring tool so you just give the captain basically credentials on how to communicate with the monitoring tool and that's it uh, again another option if you want to install it on ubuntu and on kubernetes or openshift there's a great tutorial it's called captain in the box uh, but this link gets you there as well. And then 
every time you 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 want to use Captain from your Jenkins pipeline, uh, then you obviously need to ensure that Captain understands what you want to do. So Captain has a concept of a project and services and stages, but we can also fully automate that. But normally we would use the Captain CLI to say create a project, create a service, and then add the resources. But the Jenkins library that I'm going to show you has this fully automated. But just so you know. Uh, there's also a CLI or an API for that to make this happen. Right? And every time when we create a project and add resources, then uh, uh, Captain will automatically push this uh, into, the, uh, into its GitHub repository. So it's all GitOps based. All right. Now, uh, the first thing is so you need to install Captain. It's a one time thing. Now, in order for this obviously to work, you need a system. That is that while you that when you deploy something and then you run tests, you can also pull data out of it. So in my case, what I have, I have a CI/CD environment where I, where I deploy, uh, you know, my my new builds. Uh, this can be any type of environment. In my case, I have installed my monitoring tool on it. I have inst it's an agent-based solution, Dynatrace, to automatically get infrastructure insights. Then every time I, for instance, use Jenkins for deploy, whether I deploy a Docker container, whether this is a Kubernetes cluster and I do a kubectl apply, or whether I deploy a Java app, whatever it is, the monitoring tool will automatically pick this up. So I already get metrics. And then this is the, the sample app that I'm using. I always say I'm not very proud of it because it's not pretty, but it does a good job in explaining what we're doing here. Um, then the monitoring tool also gives you insights into what's happening within uh, that thing. And it gives you things like response time, failure rates, uh, it gives you memory information and all that stuff. All these SLIs and metrics that are important. Now, the last thing is, you obviously need to have some tests because when you deploy, you wanna run some tests. And this is the critical point here where whatever test you use, make sure to look at what monitoring tool or log analytics tool you have so you can combine these. So in my case, I will be using a custom developed uh, curl script and also JMeter later on. And uh, they have basically, I just, I just integrated them. So every time JMeter executes a test, as part of the HTTP request, it adds a little token to it and says, hey, this is my, my homepage call. This is when I check version. This is when I do an echo. This is when I do invoke. So these four are four different use cases of my sample app. But as part of the request, it is adding that context. So my monitoring tool is picking this up and the monitoring tool can then later give me metrics on what's the response time of homepage version echo invoke? What's the memory usage of homepage version echo invoke? How many database calls were made by each individual thing? And these are now meaningful metrics that we are interested in, right? Especially as part of, of, of our work that we wanna do here, we do not only want to look at response time and failure rate. I think in the more distributed world we're going, we need to look at metrics like the number of database calls that are made, the number of exceptions that are thrown, the number of service calls that are made to the backend, because then we can also detect architectural regressions, meaning if your developers push in a new build and whatever that build does, it's super fast, but all of a sudden it makes 50,000 new database calls to the backend, that's something you want to flag. And this is why whatever monitoring or log analytics tool you use in the end, figure out how, to, how you can connect testing tools with it. All right. Now, if we have this, right, and if you have data that is interesting for you from your monitoring tool, from your log analytics tool, then you can take these metrics and instead of look, having it in a nice dashboard, we can then convert them into, remember, these SLI documents and SLO files so that instead of just looking at it at a dashboard and then still manually doing it, we can let Captain do the work. And so I'm going to show you some examples later on, right? But the idea is, right, once we have done this, yes, we can, after every build, manually go into the, all these reporting tools and all that stuff and, and manually compare it. But this is the reason why we built Captain, because it's about extracting data, comparing it, and then giving you a result. All right, so now I'll come to my first demo. Um, the first demo, this is part of the, you can see the GitHub link on top, github.com slash captain sandbox slash cap, uh, Jenkins tutorial. There's a couple of, uh, of Jenkins pipelines that you can just run. Um, and the one that I'm going to show you is a, uh, this captain quality gate evaluation. And when I run it, uh, what it does, it just uh, reaches out to a particular environment that I have running that is already under load. And it just pulls back metrics and then it gives me the result. And then hopefully I will see something like this, right? So let me do this. Let's go over. Um, so here's my Captain Quality Gate evaluation. Um, I have built with parameters. And again, these are just very 
focused pipelines. You can obviously build this into your pipelines. But here I'm saying, I have a captain project that is called GQ project. I have a stage and services. This is the way captain is structured um, in project stages and services. I can also specify what type of monitoring tool I wanna use. I'm choosing Dynatrace, what type of SLI. So I've pre-configured a couple of SLI definitions and then I'm saying, um, what time frame do I want to evaluate? So in this case, this is the, the most simplest use case where I'm lazy. I don't want to go to different results, different, different, uh, different tools, and then pull in the metrics, but I let um, Captain do this for me. So while this is running quickly, you can obviously look at the source code as well if you go to that Jenkins tutorial, but uh, what the pipeline actually does there's a captain init stage where my captain Jenkins library, that's also on Git, you just call init, you give it the project name, the stage name, you give it the name of the service and the monitoring tool. And then uh, the library will automatically make sure that your captain installation has this project created. And if not, it will create the project. It will also automatically configure monitoring. So everything is fully automated. You don't even need to touch captain. Um, it will create the service, as I said, and it will then also upload uh, my SLIs and my SLOs and also my, my monitoring specific configuration. This all happens out of my Jenkins pipeline. This means these files, SLIs and SLOs, in my case, they come from my source code repo. That means SLIs and SLOs, they sit next to your source code, next to your tests, because they also belong together. But now I hand it off to Captain and say, Captain, for this build, I want you to use these files. Then, I'm triggering the evaluation. There's a library function that's called send start evaluation event for a particular time frame, let's say 600 seconds. And then what Captain will do, it will take that time frame, it will reach out to the different monitoring tools, and it will basically execute these queries that we specified. It's passing in the correct context, and it's also passing in the right time frame, right? It's transforming these queries, and then it's pulling back the metric. And then at the end, I can also, because this is an asynchronous function, depending on the tool, it may take half a minute, a minute, if the data is there for that time frame, then you can say, wait for, for evaluation done. So you're, I'm, I'm polling. And uh, then whatever comes back, I can either let the pipeline succeed or I can let it fail. So if I switch back now, I can actually see the pipeline failed. Why did it fail if I move over? Captain's score was 60, result fail. Now, why is that? Let's have a look at this. All right, I can click on it. So these are the artifacts. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm, in my example, I put everything out. Uh, there's a captain HTML, and this is something I want to improve. Uh, there's a link to the captain's bridge. So the captain's bridge is now the UI. And the nice thing is uh, I have a link here that directly gets me to this particular run. So every time I execute something in captain, I get a context ID, we call it the captain context. And this context ID keeps everything in place that belongs to this execution. So with this link, I get to, hey, this was a captain quality evaluation. Uh, you also see here labels. I am passing in context from Jenkins to captain. So I know this was build number 24 from this job name and this was the job URL. So I started the evaluation at this time. Then captain started retrieving the SLIs. When this was done, it did the evaluation. And here I see all the results. And as you can see here, these are all my, my, my old results and I can go back in history and it seems my build is really crappy, uh, but it's basically data that comes back that, that is pulled in from, this is the app that I have running, right? So this is the, this is the one app that I'm running. Here is the monitoring tool behind the scenes uh, that is monitoring uh, this particular uh, service. So let me just show you. This is um, my service that I've tagged with eval service. Here we go. So again, I could go in here and click through all the reports and get the data, but why, right? This is what we've automated. So that means, where are we? Here we are. I see the results, every single SLI with the actual value, why it failed. And I can also switch over to the chart. So now I can, right? So this is, you can, you can click on all these individual columns here, um, uh, metrics, and then you can see how their individual metrics kind of evolve over time because if you wanna see trends. Cool thing though, this is you know, fully, fully automated. Um, the next use case I wanna quickly show you, and I know we have about probably 10 more minutes, 
uh, let me go here. Uh, the next one, so what their first use case was, you have an environment, you have deployed, you have run some tests from your pipeline and you know which time frame the test ran and I basically say kept and go off and analyze that time frame. The second one, uh, part of the tutorial is I actually built in a little testing script. So this is a very simple uh, pipeline that just executes uh, curl comments in a, in a loop uh, against different URLs of my app very simple poor man's load testing tool as I always call it, uh, but it does the job. So in this case, right, if you have a pipeline where you're also running tests as part of your pipeline, let me go back, this is the, it's called simple load testing with Captain Quality Gates. Uh, I can do build with parameters. So here I specify again, Captain Project, Stage and Service. The pipeline will automatically create this construct. I say monitoring. Now I wanna switch to a, a different SLI, uh, proof test and I will show you the SLIs because now this will run a little longer. I basically say what is the URL I want to test. This is my, my sample app. My simple load testing tool I can pass in here some, some endpoints it should test and the load test should run for let's say three minutes. Go off. So now what my pipeline is doing um, it's initializing Captain. It is then running the test. So this is just a curl comment, right? And then at the end, it triggers the quality gate again for that time frame. Now, while this is running, let me show you a couple of the things here. Um, you remember earlier I had uh, SLI basic and proof test. So I have two SLIs in my tutorials. One is just basic. These are three met uh, five metrics, throughput, error rate, response time. So these are the, the logical names. And here's the query behind the scenes that gets executed against the tool that you wanna get the data from. Basic means just the basic metrics. The perf test metric, this is now extended by particular metrics for, um, uh, for met metrics that give me data from a particular test run. So I still have my five from the top. What's the overall throughput, overall error rate and so on. But now I have, what's the response time of my test case invoke? my echo, my version, my homepage, right? Because I'm executing these different tests. And so you can add as many service level indicators here, as long as your tool can also extract that data. And this is where, at least in Dynatrace perspective, I can say, Dynatrace, give me the response time of a test case where the test step was version or homepage, or give me the number of service calls because my, my, my service is making backend service calls to other services so I can get the number of backend service calls it makes and pull in the metrics. So you define what metrics you want for your particular you know, project or service or pipeline stage. And then you also need the SLOs. Remember the SLOs are those I showed you in the slides earlier where you list this is my SLIs, this is my SLIs, my SLIs. So you can actually say, hey, Captain, I not only want you to pull the data out, but I also want you to compare them against a pass and warning criteria. Now, here's a, some cool things. Uh, what I didn't mention earlier, you can also weight different metrics. So you can say error rate, for instance, is more important than others. By default, every SLI gets a weight of one, but you can change the weight. Also, what you can do, uh, you can do something like this. Uh, it's called key SLI true. If you say key SLI true, that means this is a key SLI. If this fails, the whole test fails. So maybe you have a metric that is so important that if this fails, everything should fail, right? So this is also there. Um, yeah, and I have the basic version and I have the, the perf test version, right? So you can see here, it's just, this contains more metrics. Um, also, you can, you can just reference an SLI without having pass and warning. Then Captain is just showing you the value why would you do this? Well, maybe you don't yet know what a good threshold is, right? So that's the option here. Good, let's go back to my pipeline. So the tests are running now and let's see it earlier took three minutes and then it triggers the quality gate and then it takes about two minutes until all the test, the data comes back. Uh, instead of waiting here, let me just go back to the previous run from, uh, from build number nine. Let's do this because I executed the same thing just earlier to save some time, all right? It gives me in here. So this was build number nine. And you can now see here, we're getting all of these metrics. So uh, that's, um, it seems this was actually a pretty good build except the throughput didn't work. But overall, I received 92 out of 100 points. So that's why it was considered a good build. Uh, I can get all the results here for every single metric. That's also pretty cool. And uh, yeah. 
I think that's fine. So last thing I want to show you before we then open it up for Q and A. Oh yeah, it's just in my slides that I'm also going to share you. I I, I just explain uh, how my Jenkins pipelines actually call the library. Um, so you know it's it's just uh, in this case I do my captain in this before. If you run your test out of your pipeline, you base I have a, a helper function that says mark evaluation start time. So it just stores the start time frame from this on. And then when the test is done and you're, 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 you're done with the evaluation, then you say send start evaluation event. And then this function will basically take now the current timestamp as the end time frame, and then the start time that was, that was stored with the mark evaluation time frame. So you have the exact time frame that should be evaluated. But the rest is the same. Goes in and then, and then here we go. Perfect. All right, uh, let's see. Last use case that I wanna show you because you know I'm a performance enthusiast. Um, one thing that we also address with Captain is uh, we enable you to make performance testing very easy to come up with a performance driven culture as we call it. So I'm sure some of you out there and I know some, I saw some names earlier in the attendee list, there are some performance experts. Um, so if, if you wanna integrate performance testing in your pipeline, there's a lot of questions you have to answer. You know, where do we run it? What type of tests do we run? Where do we store the data and so on and so forth? And, and that's all, you know, very hard questions, some harder than others. And it's, you can all build your own testing tools. Uh, you can all use commercial tools or you can do it, build it yourself. Like do, there's a lot of do it yourself material out there. Um, but what we also said with Captain, we also want to orchestrate text, test execution. So one thing that Captain can do, it is it can trigger other testing tools. Uh, we have one integration, for instance, with NeoLoad. They provide a cloud-based service and also a service where they can launch their load generators in Kubernetes. Uh, but we also have an integration with JMeter. And this is what I want to show you now, is if you want to integrate testing, but you don't have thought about test infrastructure for load testing, but you want to run some simple JMeter scripts, for instance, then you can change your Jenkins pipeline from the way it is on top, right? Instead of trying to figure out how to stand up your test infrastructure, execute the tests. The only thing you need to do is you need to tell Captain, hey, Captain, I just deployed my app. Here is my URL of my app. Now you go off and you run the test scripts. The only thing you need to give Captain is the test script itself then again, whatever tool it is. And then what Captain will actually do, it will execute the tests. After the tests report back to Captain that the tests are complete, it will then go through its regular process of querying the SLIs, comparing them against the SLOs and giving you back the result, right? So that's kind of the, the overview here. All right, so uh, let me show you this as well. Um, I have another pipeline, uh, Captain Performance as a, as a service, that's the way I, I call it. And it's, it's again, it, this is just screenshots on how it should look like. So let's try this. Uh, if I go to my uh, Captain Performance as a Service, and I can do build with parameters. And then in this case, again, I always reference a Captain project. Now in this case, I wanna do, again, Dynatrace as a monitoring tool. Uh, here I'm using uh, JMeter, um, because that's an integration that comes with Captain, and what Captain can also do, you can up, you can give it the JMeter scripts, and you can define different workloads. So I want to run a quick test. I think performance ten is ten virtual users very quick, uh, but I basically say, please, uh, here is my URL. Go off, run this particular test, use these SLIs for evaluation, and then wait 60, uh, 60 minutes in maximum until the results are completely done, or let the pipeline fail anyway. And uh, that's it. So let's try this out and let's see how it runs. While this runs, I think what I completely have not uh, shown you is, let me just go into my uh, Jenkins tutorial, right? This is, where, this is where all this stuff comes from in case you wanna try it out. Um, there is a, the, the tutorials and samples. I also have another video linked here and all the different use cases that you basically just saw. Uh, important because I know a lot of you are interested uh, in uh, in the actual uh, Jenkins files. Uh, so for instance, the, the quality gate, uh, here is the Captain Evaluation Jenkins file. 
right? Uh, it's, it is really straightforward. I'm including my, my, my captain library. Then I have my captain object here. I know there's probably other ways to do this as well, but I include my captain library. And then what I do is I captain in it. I give it the project name, the service name, the stage, and the monitoring tool. These are all parameters that I, all of my pipeline parameters. And then what I do, I give captain all the necessary files. I say captain, captain add resource. So here is my Dynatrace configuration file, my SLI and my SLO, right? And then this is my, it's initialize captain. And then in my trigger quality gate, I just say, hey, captain, send start evaluation event where you can give it a start time and an end time. And my library supports different, different ways. You can either specify a full timestamp if you know start and end. You can only specify a start time frame, then it will go from start to now. You can also specify just numbers uh, where you can say, um, let's say 60 minutes in the past until zero until now or 60 minutes until 30 minutes, then it's kind of like a time window in minutes, this also works. And the nice thing is what you get back is the captain context, that's the unique ID that then allows you also to query later on uh, more data status. Right? Uh, it also allows you to open up the bridge, right? It's the, the, the captain context is also something that allows you to go into that deep link. And then at the end, wait for result. I just have a, um, a function here that is called uh, wait for evaluation done, where you can say, hey, wait until a, a maximum timeout, because sometimes it can, you know, maybe something happens and you don't want to wait forever. Um, so you can specify timeout and you can also say set build result true. In this case, this function will also set the build result of the Jenkins pipeline, um, you know, successful, failed or, or instable, depending on the result that comes back. So this is this. All right, um, as you can see, these tests may run a little longer, but uh, I, I, th I hope I've, I've shown you pretty much most of the things I wanted to show you, um, just to complete the slides and then very happy then to open it up for Q&A. In the slides, just what I showed you in uh, the walkthrough, I always explain what type of uh, calls I make from Jenkins to the captain library to initialize the project, to upload the right resources. In this case, for when, when captain should also execute my, my tests, I have to upload my test scripts, obviously, like in this case, Gmeter. And then uh, instead of saying evaluate, I want captain to actually uh, do the test. So there's a, there's a special function that is called send deployment finished event. I basically say captain, I have deployed, my, my app is deployed, here's the URL, now you go off and do your thing. This is where then Captain triggers, JMeter executes the test based on the workload configuration I gave it. Um, it also sends events to the monitoring tool. This is also a nice integration. Captain also automatically sends event to Dynatrace, to Prometheus or to other tools, informing that tool about what is actually happening. Then the SLI magic happens again, right in short. And then at the end, you get the result back, okay? So this is, I think, um, this is, this should show you uh, how, how this can be done, all the, the different use cases. Um, for the, uh, the, the JMeter integration, we also built the option of not only running one JMeter script, but you can upload multiple scripts and then you can also specify through workloads what type of workload you want to execute. Remember in my drop down box, I specified performance 50 or performance 10. So Captain will then execute whatever I've specified here and, and pass in uh, things like uh, loop count number virtual users. So these are parameters that go into the script. Yeah, and um, to wrap it up, if you are interested, the, the Jenkins shared library, right? That's the one that my tutorial is using is all on GitHub. And uh, it's hopefully you know, easy to use. Um, the, on the GitHub page, if you look at that GitHub page, uh, then where is it? Here's the captain library. I tried to, uh, to do a, a reasonably good job of, of showing some examples on, on how this all works, how to do a quality Git evaluation, how to do performance testing, also how to do progressive delivery because captain can do much more. So there's a lot of examples in here. And um, in order for Jenkins to know to which captain to talk to right now, uh, you, I'm, I'm expecting global properties, uh, global environment variables with these names. This is obviously something we wanna improve. We wanna also uh, allow credentials. 
uh, but that's it, yeah. And that's actually the current plans. Um, so we want to support credentials versus the environment variables. We want to potentially create a Jenkins plugin to also visualize some of the data uh, from Captain in, um, in Jenkins directly, like the heat map would be great. And we also want to provide some callbacks because one of the capabilities that Captain also has, Captain can orchestrate the complete end-to-end -end delivery, uh, can do deployment, it can do testing, and it can do evaluation. And for the individual pieces, we can even say, Captain, for deployment, call this Jenkins pipeline. For testing, do this. And for evaluation, obviously, do this. And if you are calling a Jenkins pipeline from Captain to do a particular test, then that pipeline also needs to report back to Captain. There is already a way, there is a service out there that connects these two, but we want to make it even easier. And with that, I want to say thanks for listening. I really hope there's a lot of questions now. Um, and hopefully this was useful. And uh, yeah, Oleg or Mark, I want to hand it back over to you. Yeah, thanks a lot for your presentation. Yeah, it was definitely useful. And it's great to see performance testing at scale. Yeah, I was uh, using Jenkins uh, with Gmeter and other tools for a while. Well, mm -hmm. long before Kubernetes was uh, created and uh, long before uh, other tools were created. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still. So uh, if anyone ho has any questions, please use Zoom q &A. Again, we can uh, grant voice permissions if you want uh, to ask. And yeah, I have a few questions uh, in my list. Mm -hmm. Unless Mark has questions first. I have I have questions in mind. I have a page full of scribbles that I took while <laughs> and okay. Andreas was talking. Thanks very much, Andreas. So mm -hmm. so, but if there are, if there are participants, I'm happy to defer to the participants. I just don't see any in the participant Q and A right now. So I'd like to go with mine. Mm -hmm. Oleg, are you okay if I ask? Yeah, just a bit. All right. So so Andreas, I'm mm -hmm. I'm deeply deeply interested in how to accelerate these kinds of evaluations are there any insights you could share on things you've learned as you've developed captain as you've interacted with it how do you accelerate the throughput of getting these kinds of results they seem like performance benchmarks are probably expensive and hard to do and hard mm -hmm. to repeat what what guidance would you offer us for yeah. how to accelerate that's a good question that's a good point so i agree with you performance benchmarks for some organizations or depending on the project is hard but one thing that I've hinted to, it's not only the response time and the throughput, but it might be some basic metrics that you can also look at when you just run your functional tests. So for instance, a metric that I love because I've seen so many applications fail is things like how many database calls do we see after we execute this particular functional test? How many log files, how many log statements are written? Uh, how many exceptions are thrown? Uh, how much memory before and after the test is the JVM consuming. And the thing here is you can see very easy, uh, you know, first of all, um, you get benefit because if you, if you can immediately detect, hey, somebody changed the logging strategy and now we get a thousand log messages and before we only had five. Um, or a code change, we went from five database statements to 50 database statements. And you can find these things with very simple tests. And you, you just need a single metric. But the thing is, you need to look at the metric and you need to get this metric. But the nice thing with this now is Captain Autumn makes sure that you automatically get this metric from whatever tool obviously that provides it and automatically compares it, stores it for you in history, you see trends. Um, but if you don't, so to answer your question, if you don't yet have a performance best practice, well, first of all, get started with it because it's not that hard to write a JMeter test or what I did, my, 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 my poor man's load testing tool, it's a curl script, come on. Everybody can write a while loop with some curls. There's, there's no, just you look, you look at my example, what I wrote, right? But if you have some API tests, some functional tests, I'm pretty sure there's some of these, I call them architectural metrics, number of database calls, number of log messages, number of exceptions, memory, some of these metrics that you can extract and that gives you immediate value. Thank you, thanks very much. Frantically writing it down. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one question about Gmeter. Uh, so, does uh, Captain uh, support uh, load uh, from uh, multiple instances? For example, if I want uh, to run load from multiple machines. Uh, so, be, so, yeah. so right now the current so the the current thing is the uh, Gmeter extended service. Mm -hmm. 
right? that's the service we have here. This will basically just run JMeter from a, uh, so it deploys uh, JMeter in a container in, in Kubernetes where Captain runs and then just runs it from there. Uh, I would encourage anybody out there to help us extend that, uh, that service to then maybe you know, reach out and, uh, and run it from, from, different, um, from different locations. Or I know there are solutions out there that can already deploy a JMeter in different places and then you just have an API call that you need to make from Captain in order to trigger it. And, but right now the current thing that comes with Captain itself, it just deploys a container and then runs your JMeter script in that container. That's what it does. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so for JMeter, uh, the main problem is not to trigger multiple workloads. It's quite straightforward. The problem yeah. is to aggregate uh, the reports, especially in runtime. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether I kept that uh, supports uh, runtime reporting and processing. We don't do runtime yeah. reporting. Rather, remember what Captain really does. Captain is an orchestrator. So with Captain, yeah. we are triggering different things. Like uh, we are mm -hmm. triggering, um, you know, somebody needs to deploy something. Somebody needs to run a test. Somebody needs to evaluate. So for evaluation, mm -hmm. the built-in Captain quality gate comes in. For test execution, you can use the JMeter service, but you can also trigger whatever else you want. So for instance, one of, this, one of the things here is the uh, generic execute the service of Captain. Um, mm -hmm. This is also a cool, uh, a, a very, I would say, easy to use uh, thing where you can either define uh, an HTTP file or a shell script that gets then executed based on a certain captain event. So for instance, you can say every time captain makes a configuration change, please call this shell script because you wanna do something. Or if captain sends internally a start test event, you can execute this. So that means you can, it's, you're very flexible with what you do. But remember a captain is event driven. And then one thing we do is with the quality gate where we pull in metrics from different data sources, but we don't do it live. Um, you could build a component that does it live, but I believe, that this is the job of your monitoring tools and your log aggregation tools and, and your test. Yeah, I think that's a different job. Yeah. So it's basically what we were doing. We were pushing data from uh, GMeter directly to Nagios. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm a bit told. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, after that, Nagios was uh, aggregating statistics uh, from uh, for us. Exactly. Right? Or, I mean, obviously, again, I'm, I'm a little uh, not biased here, but I'm lucky I have Dynatrace. And so all the data ends up in Dynatrace anyway. So I, my only data source I need for my stuff is, is Dynatrace because I get the, 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 the log metrics, I get the infrastructure metrics, the process metrics, the, the test metrics, I get everything in one tool. Um, but we built Captain Agnostic because we wanted to know there's a lot of people out there that need different data sources and that's just the real world. Right? So we, we did receive a question that just came in from Carlos mm -hmm. Panozzo. Mm -hmm. um, how can I train my team about it? So do you have some recommendations on techniques to, to introduce these concepts to a team and help them be successful? Yeah, so I can encourage you to, if you're interested in Captain, uh, then I can encourage you on uh, the tutorials page, tutorials.captain.sh. Uh, in general, the concepts though of performance engineering. So I've been doing performance engineering for many, many years. So there's a, there's, there is a, uh, a sorry, blog down a trace. So I just uh, wrote a, um, a, a guide to automated SRE driven performance engineering which again, I know it uses Dynatrace, but it explains all the concepts of SLIs and SLOs and, and how you can start building an SRE driven mindset. So I think that could be an interesting block to start. And another one that I wrote actually three years ago is uh, traits of a performance engineer in 2020. I wrote this 2017, I believe. And I believe it still holds true. So what does it need to, um, to, to kind of start with a performance movement within a company. And there's a lot of other great resources out there as well. I really love um, my friends at Perfbytes, uh, Perfbytes podcast, uh, Mark Tomlinson, James Pooley and co. They are great. They've been talking about performance engineering for many years. Uh, Alexander Podelko is one of the, the, the people that I also know. He's been writing a lot of blogs. Uh, also, um, I have another podcast. It's called Pure Performance. Um, 
it's on Spreaker, where a colleague of mine uh, and I are, are, you know, talking about uh, performance relevant topics and not only like how do we load test, but also how do we get a DevOps mindset, a performance mindset into, a, into an organization. So that might be interesting as well to get started. Yeah, thank you for the answer. Um, yeah, I had a question about uh, the pipeline libraries, etc. Mm -hmm. So what is your experience with them? Uh, did you experience any significant obstacles and how you work uh, solved to them? So I got to tell you that, you know, my I've been I've been trained as a, as a software engineer when I started. So I think engineering and, and coding uh, is easy for me. It always gets, it, it always takes getting used to a particular type of language and a particular type of, um, you know, terminology, obviously. Overall, I found it pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, I did a lot of trials and errors, right? I'll try, why does this stupid thing not compile? What's, what's wrong again? Where did I miss something? Um, but overall, it was it was super easy. There's so many. I, I found a tutorial. I don't remember. I don't remember the tutorial that I found. But there was a tutorial, kind of like my first Jenkins pipeline library, and and I just took it and started from there. Um, I think uh, from a troubleshooting perspective, it might be sometimes a little easier. So to not work with too much log outputs to figure out where like. I don't know, like a debugging capability would sometimes be cool. And maybe something like this exists. I don't know, because I am, uh, you know, Jenkins is just something that I do like, let's say on the side now, because I, I want to integrate Captain with as many CI CD tools out there. Uh, so maybe there's a debugging. I don't know. Is there a debugging capability of debugging through the pipelines? Uh, not exactly. Okay. So it's uh, one uh, topic which we continuously discuss at uh, Jenkins Contributor Summit, et cetera, that yeah. we really need pipeline debugging. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's not uh, very in common means. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I would wish, and maybe again, maybe this is a question for you, maybe it exists, but I would love to display, right, some of this data here in in, in Jenkins. And I think the only way I can do, I, 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 to do it is, is to really write a Jenkins Java plugin. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so yeah, in principle, you have to write a plugin. At the yeah. same time, uh, there are plugins like uh, plot plugin uh, or something like that, uh, which take uh, data and can visualize this data. Okay. And uh, yeah, um, uh, also recently what's that, they were, what's that plugin? Uh, for example, plot plugin. Just oh, the plot. plot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so plot uses a GNU plot uh, to build the data. So obviously, you can't uh, build. Uh, awesome uh, visualization there, but it's just something straightforward. Yeah. Uh, there are other plugins which uh, do more uh, with regards to graphing. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, um, yeah, uh, maybe you've heard about warnings and G plugin. So it's mm -hmm. a plugin basically which aggregates all uh, analysis and the reporting tools at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a lot of uh, enhancements there in terms of visualization and reporting tools. So last week we had UI UX Hackfest and Uli Hafner was presenting how to do better reporting uh, with Jenkins, basically using the standard JavaScript libraries. Uh -huh. And I believe that it would be possible to create plugins which would again take uh, generic YAMLs or JSONs or whatever and build uh, fancy charts yeah, like a, we already have. Yeah, like a high chart, and like it would be cool to use a high chart plugin. Then I can just, yeah. yeah. I think it's something we could improve, and it would definitely help uh, developers of libraries, yeah. because library is a low cost way to make extensible uh, functionality in Jenkins. Yeah, and to share this functionality. So, yeah, uh, having such a generic plotting plugins would definitely help. Yeah, but overall, right? I felt it was it was super easy. I mean, I'm as you can see, I'm using Visual Studio Code for my coding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not too, it's not too, not too bad. So now I had assumed, in order to get throughput, that you were probably running many of these tests in parallel. If they are running in parallel, how do you associate a change in? How do you associate something at the back end like database hits? Mm -hmm. to your fr which front end test caused or do you not is it that you typically don't run parallel or, okay no, you so run you do run parallel tests and this is let me just quickly go to my uh <coughs> excuse me my my g meter here so um 
this is what I mentioned in the beginning is tagging of requests. So when JMeter executes that request to a URL, then what I have done, I have a bean shell preprocessor where I'm adding an additional HTTP header on every request. And that header, I call it X Dynatrace test, includes name value pairs, LSN, load script name, uh, TSN test step name, LTN test name. So that's the script name, the step name, the test name, and the virtual user. So I can ba I basically add context data to every request I send uh, to the application. Now in my case, my app is uh, monitored by Dynatrace and we do distributed tracing. So that means what I can say, I can say uh, under diagnostic tools, right? I can now say I want to have, uh, let's say a number of, let's say number of calls to other services, not split by request name because these are URLs, right? So here on the bottom, you see the URLs, API, blah, blah. There's a lot of stuff. But now I can say, I want to have it split by uh, the request attribute, I need to tell you, request attribute, uh, it's the test step name. And I only want to have it, I only, only want my monitoring tool to look at data from my, where, from let's say where actually the test step name is, is, uh, is coming in. There we go. So now I can see the data that came in and I see the number of service calls Right in this case, invoke is the only one that is actually making service calls to the backend. And it's because of distributed tracing, because in, in my case, again, my monitoring tool is doing end-to-end -end tracing, but it also captures the HTTP header from the monitoring tool and then extracts these bits and pieces. So if I, if I look, if I show you what is, what's behind the scenes, and again, whether it's Dynatrace or I don't know, New Relic, AppDynamics, Datadog, I'm sure they do it in a similar way, but in our case, I look at every single request that my monitoring tool captured. And on every request, we call them pure paths, our end-to-end -end trace. I can go on every single request and, uh, and, and in my case, right? So this is the stuff that Dynatrace extracted from me. This is information that the load testing tool put on the request. So this is the X Dynatrace test header, but Dynatrace is extracting the individual pieces. And therefore I have this metadata on every trace but then Dynatrace also gives me the ability to say, well, I don't, I'm not interested in every trace. I'm interested in metrics based on traces with particular piece of metadata. And now this is then also the data that I can put on my charts, right? Like in this case, I have my dashboard that says um, top CPU consuming test steps. So look at all the requests, look at the CPU consumption, but split it by test name or top backend database, uh, top backend calls. And now, as we have a metric, I can also put these metrics into my SLI. Where's my SLI? Here's my SLI. Number of service calls of my particular test case. This is the way I query it from Dynatrace. And this is also how Captain can automatically query it and then compare it with previous builds. This is how this works. That's great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, so there is another question uh, about uh, I'd like to get uh, Captain use cases for DevOps activities. So what would be the main use case? For DevOps activities, yeah. So um, if you look at, at Captain at the website, right? What we are, what, what the problem that we try to solve is we've seen a lot of organizations that are starting building pipelines and these pipelines start from small and they grow and they grow and they basically you have, you have process with tool integrations all bundled in in your pipeline code. And then you start from one pipeline, then you copy it over and you have 10, 15, 100 different copies. And the problem though really is that you, uh, you don't really have a separation of concern. You don't have the process clearly defined somewhere and the tools that should do this. So what Captain does, Captain is an event-based orchestration plane, or actually we like to call it now a, um, a choreography engine, where Captain, you, uh, and again, if you, if you look at the tutorials, uh, the, way, the way Captain works, you define a so-called shipyard file, 
So instead of defining pipelines and stages and then writing pipeline code, you say, I have two stages. I have a staging stage and I have a production stage. In staging, I want to do a direct deployment strategy and I want to run performance tests. In production, I want to do a blue-green deployment and I also want to run performance tests. And I also have a remediation strategy. So this is on the one side where you define the process and then you have another uh, option where you can say, okay, which tools should then actually be called or triggered when there's a new artifact to be deployed. So Captain is really an event-driven orchestration engine where you can give it an artifact, whether this is a container or a jar file, and then based on that process definition, it then internally triggers events and these events are then picked up by tools that can do a particular job. So it could be, I have maybe a Jenkins pipeline that can deploy my Java app, app into a certain environment. Then I can use, for instance, the uh, Captain Jenkins service, Captain Jenkins service on GitHub to uh, call a particular Jenkins uh, pipeline, right? So I can say I want for, let's say, a, a deploy for a configuration change event when somebody wants to change the configuration you build, then please call this particular uh, 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 Jenkins pipeline. When this pipeline is done, then Captain knows, okay, now deployment is done. That's great. What's the next thing I need to do? Okay, I need to run tests. So now it sends an event. Hey, who can execute performance tests? And then maybe my Gmeta script picks it up and then the Gmeter runs the tests. So it's decoupling, first of all, uh, actions, uh, pro processes from tools. And the beneficiary, I think, is the developer, but you can still use all your existing tools that you want to do individual builds, so we're not replacing anything, we're just orchestrating it. This is for continuous delivery. And for operations, this is where the remediation strategy come in. We have a lot of people that are, you know, running large systems in production. And when a problem happens, when they get notified by an alert, they want to execute certain actions. And it's also an event-driven model. Problem comes in, based on the problem, execute a certain task, wait for the tool to say, did it work, yes or no, really evaluate that it worked. If not, do something else. So uh, Captain also has an, an, um, an orchestration engine for auto remediation. This is what Captain does overall. And the piece that I've shown you today is, is one sliver. It's the, the quality gate evaluation that we use between stages uh, and it is the, the test execution. But we greatly believe for DevOps, that was the question, how can it help in DevOps? We, we believe it's the, um, it's, it, it's the, uh, the answer. It, it allows you to write, the, uh, it allows you to deliver software in a way that your developers actually writing software. Your developers write event-driven microservice. They're, they're writing componentized services that are orchestrated through events. Yet your pipelines are large microlithic, uh, monolithic pieces of code. And I think Captain tries to help you to, you know, use your bits and pieces that you have. Maybe you have a Jenkins pipeline for deploying, for testing, and for doing something else. But then it orchestrates the whole thing, event-driven. Thank you. Hey, is, is evaluation of a pull request in this kind of environment or a potential change any different in the captain environment than, than doing work off of the master branch? Are there things that are unique to thinking about many pull requests arriving that cause you to, to configure captain differently or to have it think differently about the problem? Um, so pull requests, right? If you want to integrate Captain with your with your GitOps with your pull requests, then you would again make a call to to Captain, then trigger Captain as part of let's say the the of your of your pull request validation, like the quality gate. Uh, do you need to think about it differently based on branches and master? Um, I would say you could model it in captain based on stages so we have the concept of a captain project and then different stages and then instead of having dev stage production you could say i want to integrate it with my dev environment but i allow every developer to have their individual feature branch and then if pull requests come in and i want to separate the data uh, i may have captain internally organize each branch in a in a stage so i'm not sure if this makes sense but what i'm let me show you something here. I have a project here. It's the uh, simple node project. And 
right? I have staging and prod. So you can have in, in an end-to-end -end delivery environment, you have multiple stages. And if you want to have multiple branches, you will probably, one option would be to have, you, you take the stage concept in Captain and apply it to different branches. And then you have it clearly separated. You see all the data, the, all the quality gates that happen in this branch versus this branch. The other option would be to use the tags and the labels. Remember what we had in my, was here, right? If I go over, uh, I every time when I called uh, Captain, I gave it labels. So you can clearly differentiate the data with, hey, this was triggered by this build. This was triggered by this pull request on this particular um, branch. So you can also separate it through the labels, through metadata here. I'm not sure if this answers the question, but- kind That, of that did, that answered some, it very, very well. Again. Thank you, Andreas, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So we are slowly running out of time. Uh, there is no questions in the queue. So probably I'll share the poll results from the beginning. That would be great, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess every participant uh, should be able to see them now. Mm -hmm. Do you see them? Uh, I this? see them, yeah, 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 yeah. So familiar with the concepts, but uh, not using them right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, consistent in what I've seen uh, in the past. There's only a, a small group of people that are really using it. Uh, bill validations work right now, partially automated. I like the fully automated. It's a 33%, that's great. Um, we want to automate. That's actually the bigger group, right? Or kind of on top, yeah. Um, hardly any performance tests or no tests even, right? That's interesting. Yeah. And what I'm really happy about is, yes, we have existing Kubernetes cluster to deploy to. Um, and there's only one no answer because we have received feedback from some people that said, uh, while they have Kubernetes clusters, uh, some people might not be able to deploy something into these clusters, but I assume the audience here that are maintaining and managing pipelines and, and, and obviously Jenkins on in the combination with Kubernetes, you obviously have Kubernetes available and you can deploy into Kubernetes. So that's, that's great to see the number one answer here. Yeah. Uh, Kubernetes and Jenkins uh, is trending. Uh, yeah. So we hit something like 10% adoption of uh, Kubernetes from what I've yeah. seen, uh, you know, statistics. Yeah. Well, still a long way to go, but yeah, um, uh, Jenkins is heavily used in Kubernetes nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, the polls, the results, can I, you know what I'll just do? I just took a screenshot. Uh, I have screenshots. I will send them to you. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise I would have just opened this one here. Just want to make sure I keep it here as well. Yeah. It's always good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if there is no more questions, uh, yeah, thanks a lot to Andres for this presentation. It's yeah. awesome to uh, see such use cases and uh, to learn uh, new things about integrations. Yeah. Yeah, and if anybody wants to follow up, right, again, here's my material. I'm also very happy to uh, to go into a direct conversation if you want to know how this works. Also, we have a Slack channel. I forgot to mention this. Slack.captain.sh uh, would be great if people could sign up. Uh, Slack.captain.sh. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, share a link um, in uh, post meetup communication. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also if you develop uh, pipe. Uh, more complicated pipelines for Captain and Jenkins. And if you decide to develop a plugin, uh, please let the community know because we have a lot of uh, use cases to share. We also organize regular meetings. For example, we have special uh, meeting for Cloud Native Seek, which is uh, focused uh, also on uh, various integrations with Kubernetes environment. Uh, we have a lot of discussions about quality assurance mm -hmm. um, in our channels, of course. So. Definitely, we can find a lot of opportunities to discuss that. Mm -hmm. And uh, charting plugins, yes, I think that we mm -hmm. could really discuss creating a new charting plugins based on uh, the new technologies. Yeah. Because we have a lot of new UIs, so uh, exactly. making them generalized and making them available as pipeline steps would be mm -hmm. quite an interesting project. Mm -hmm. Okay, any additional feedback or comments before we stop the, the recording? 
but not from my end. No. Okay, then thanks everyone. And yeah, I will see you at the next meetups.